Week two of the Cavalier Insider pregame show, Andrew Ramspacker and Jerry Ratcliffe as you uh, as we lead you up to kickoff, Virginia taking on Richmond 3.30 on Saturday uh, at Scott Stadium. A bunch of storylines uh, in that particular game. Some of those uh, kind of stretch back to what happened in week one. Uh, we're talking about the quarterbacks basically all the time uh, on both sides, Virginia and Richmond. First for the Cavaliers. All summer, and basically since the spring, I guess, Jerry, uh, we had talked about Grayson Lambert, the coaches had talked about Grayson Lambert. He's the guy. He's the number one starter. Um, he was handed the keys to the car basically since the day one of spring practice. The David Wofford kind of experiment was over. This was Grayson Lambert's thing. We all knew the background. Here's this guy from Georgia, big kid, turned down SEC offers with the big arm, uh, with a lot of potential. He was only a sophomore. It seems, you know, a great scenario for Virginia. This, you know, this could be the guy that could not only lead them this year, but had two more years left to kind of end this whole carousel that's uh, kind of haunted this program since Mike London started. And well, that era lasted all of eight possessions last <laughs> Saturday uh, before he was pulled after a couple of pick sixes. One was his fault. One wasn't. And in comes in little known Matt Johns, and he becomes almost kind of this this legend of sorts. Nobody knows anything about him. He almost rallies him back from a 21-3 deficit. Virginia loses to number 7 UCLA, 28-20. to uh, Matt Johns had a fourth quarter blunder there when he missed up a signal. But besides that, it was a really, really impressive effort. I mean, who do you, how do you kind of wrap your mind around all this that, that all took place between these quarterbacks last week? Yeah, it wouldn't be Virginia if it wasn't a quarterback, That's Ryan, right? right? Um, I was stunned, actually, that uh, – not that Johns came in and played so well. Well, that too. But <laughs> but the fact that Lambert did not do any better than he did. I, uh, he looked tentative to me. Yeah. He looked, uh, every, all the passes seemed to be check downs or short passes, very safe things. Uh, didn't test the downfield waters. And I know UCLA had a good defense, but Johns was able to complete yeah. downfield and, and didn't look nearly as tentative about it. I, he looked very comfortable and relaxed to me. And, you know, I don't see how they can't start him. I keep hearing the argument, well, you're going to lose Lambert. Uh, you're going to ruin the kid's confidence. But if he's the leader that he's portrayed to be, I think he'll fight back and get his job back if he's that kind of guy. If he's not, then you want a guy who can put points on the board and move the team. With me, i got to go with the guy who produces. Yeah, certainly Matt Johns right now is the, is the hot hand. He's the flavor of the week. Uh, for Saturday's game uh, – you know, as of Friday afternoon, uh, no starter had been announced. Seems like Mike Lennon's going to announce that or going to make that that move around game time. Um, but certainly, Grayson Lambert and Matt Johns will play. It almost seems like this will be an audition of sorts to yeah. see who kind of can take kind of the control here, and then whoever wins that might kind of go further. Just to, to, to run down the, the brief stat line from those two guys, Grayson Lambert, 16 of 23, 112 yards, two interceptions. As you said, it was mostly kind of check downs. That was somewhat of Virginia's game plan. Obviously, they wanted to keep UCLA's offense off the field with Brett Hundley uh, and company. You know, short, controlled passing game, run the football. Uh, but, of course, when Matt Johns went in there, his first ever pass, his first pass in, the, in, in, in college <laughs> period, not only in that game, went for 32 yards on the right sideline, a beautiful kind of a drop in it between a couple defenders to Cannon Severin um, that gets to the UCLA 38-yard 30 yard, 30 line. Two plays later, they score. They go into halftime with all this momentum. And Matt Johns came out and played well in the second half as well. He finishes 13 of 22, 154 yards, two scores. And the big thing, I think, was, was no turnovers. So that was kind of the quarterback side. That's been debated all week. Uh, it really overshadowed what was, almost, I think, as good as a defensive performance that I've seen since I've been here. This, will be my, this is my third year covering Virginia. There was so much uh, against this defense coming in. You know, UCLA's offense, they had the Sports Illustrated cover boy, Brett Hundley. They had everything. Uh, this was kind of a trendy national title pick because of their offense. Um, granted, they had some, some some question marks in the offense line. The center was hurt, things like that. But I don't think anybody expected that offense to be dominated in the way that it was. And Virginia's defense was absolutely <laughs> dominant. Only allowed seven points uh, all game. Obviously, UCLA had three defensive scores. But offensively, they only scored one touchdown. They got to Hundley five times and basically just harassed him all day. Yeah, and uh, 11 tackles behind the line of scrimmage. Uh, they just confused those UCLA linemen and, and maybe Hundley too uh, all game long. I, I, I know that the uh, UCLA offensive line coach said it was the 
bleep. Uh, bleepiest uh, performance he'd ever been around mm-hmm. as a player Part and our coach. And, uh, you know, listening to uh, some of Danny Rocco's comments this week and scouting Virginia from that game, uh, he said it was obvious to him that Virginia confused UCLA. So yeah. Tanuda and Archer were working their magic a little bit. And I think this defense, uh, as you said, it, it's been terrific. I, I can't imagine them playing much better defense than what they did the other day. I, I wrote this morning that it, uh, it, it looked to me like some of the Rick Lance defenses back in the 90s uh, under George Welsh. And, and Lance was a terrific defensive coordinator who Archer – worked with at Miami many moons ago for Howard Schnellenberger. But, um, yeah, this defense, I I was very impressed. I expected a lot, but not as much as they produced the other day. I think they're just going to keep getting better, and that's good for Virginia because that should keep them in games. Yeah, there's no doubt, and there's no doubt. Obviously, there's there's still question marks, a lot of developing to do on the offensive side of the ball. The offensive line had a lot of question marks. For the most part, they held their own uh, against UCLA, did not allow a sack, which was a big accomplishment. Virginia had not done that until week six of, of last year. Uh, but on the other side of that, they didn't create a lot of rushing lanes. Obviously, UCLA's front seven is pretty good. I don't know if Virginia's going to play uh, a front like that, at least in the near future. Uh, but obviously, now, now the big thing is, 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 is Virginia can keep that up defensively. Um, you, you, so you, they think they, you think they can. Last year, they showed flashes. You know, BYU, they were really good. Uh, Pitt, obviously, they were really good. Virginia mm-hmm. Tech, they were really good. But there were some injuries thrown in there that I thought affected uh, that defense's play, caused those inconsistencies. Brent Urban was out. Demetrius Nicholson was out. Maurice Candy was out. Those were three big pieces uh, that certainly hampered them. So I think if this group can stay healthy, I think you're right. I think that will keep them in every game. And then this kind of this, this, uh, this down ACC coastal, who knows? Maybe Virginia will have a chance to make something out of what a, a lot of people thought uh, would be a pretty down year. Obviously, still 11 games to go. And the next one uh, is Saturday against Richmond. We'll look ahead to that matchup as Virginia brings in a couple of uh, familiar faces at quarterback on Saturday. We'll get to that here in, in the following segment. All right, here to break down uh, Virginia's Saturday matchup with Richmond. Again, segment number two here on the Cavalier Insider pregame show. Andrew Ranspacker and Daily Progress columnist Jerry Hootie Ratcliffe as the Cavaliers 0-1 take on the Richmond Spiders of the football championship subdivision. They come in at 1-0. Richmond, uh, a team that certainly has playoff aspirations at the lower level, a uh, team ranked in the top 20 in the FCS polls. And a team that Virginia fans are plenty familiar with when it comes to their quarterback situation. Michael Strauss uh, is the starter, a former Virginia transfer, a guy who set Richmond records last year uh, for basically everything. Yards, completions, uh, attempts, touchdowns. Uh, And then they added somebody else a couple years ago who had to set out last year because of transfer role. A transfer rule that is Michael Rocco. So now Richmond is using a two quarterback system as well. A little Strauss heavy, then Rocco kind of comes in and, and mixes his way in. But obviously, Michael Rocco is the most known of that name to Virginia fans, a guy who, uh, in the Mike London era, was the most successful quarterback. Uh, led them to the Chick fil A Bowl in 2011, uh, you know, won a battle with, with David Watford, and then obviously in 2012, which was the kind of the much publicized, kind of back and forth with, with him and, and Philip Sims, who came in in that offseason uh, from Alabama. A lot of drama <laughs> went on in that season, and a lot of drama in the offseason. Like just eight days afterward, after that season ended against Virginia Tech, in which Michael Rocco uh, threw a, a late interception uh, that, that kind of gave Virginia Tech a 17 14 win. Rocco announces uh, his, or Virginia gives him his, his release to transfer. Uh, from UVA, kind of shocking a lot of people. And uh, about a month later, he goes and finds his uncle there in Richmond. And now, about two years later, he comes back to Scott Stadium uh, to take on his, his old guys. And, you know, I, I was there in Richmond on Wednesday. Michael Schaus and Michael Rocco talked. There wasn't a whole lot of, you know, bulletin board material they were putting up. Obviously, they wish Virginia well. But, you know, they have something to prove here. Um, how intriguing, how, first of all, how bizarre is this whole situation when you have <laughs> Richmond coming in with a couple of former Virginia quarterbacks and one who knows all about a quarterback carousel and the other side, UVA is in the middle of another quarterback carousel. Uh, it's, it's almost like a circus yeah. act, you know, <laughs> I don't think I've, in my career I've ever seen anything like this. I, I don't even know if it's ever happened in the history of yeah. college football to tell you the truth. It's just really bizarre. 
And, uh, you know, we never really got to see much of Michael Strauss mm -hmm. when he was here. Uh, Virginia was, I think they had like five or six quarterbacks right. on scholarship at the time. He was buried in the depth chart and just got frustrated and left, I guess. Uh, Rocco, I thought, was a very, very solid quarterback. And if, I think if he had not transferred and been here last year, Virginia would have won four or five, maybe six games. Mm -hmm. I think he was that good or that – of a. a would solidify the offense, if nothing else. He, he was a very smart, coach's son, savvy kind of quarterback. Only two, Flor uh, two, only two Virginia quarterbacks were being Florida State, him and Mike Groh, both coaches' sons and very smart guys. But, uh, I, I, you know, I think it speaks to the mismanagement of the whole quarterback sure. process by Virginia staff. Uh, Phillip Sims was just a, a big bump in the road, a, a train wreck, if nothing else. And, uh, uh, you know, Rocco clearly was frustrated and left, but uh, it's going to be weird having those two guys come back into Scott Stadium this weekend trying to beat their old team. And uh, I think Strauss maybe has more to prove than Rocco right. just because he he didn't even get a yeah. chance in his mind, I yeah. think. So it, it's going to be weird just seeing that and all the other inner working dynamics of the game with coaches at Richmond used to be here and Mike Lennon used to be there. It's, right. Just a bizarre, bizarre situation. Yeah, a little gamesmanship uh, already. Uh, this was kind of brought up about two or three weeks ago. Michael Rocco and Michael Strauss are uh, our game captains for Saturday, so they will come <laughs> out uh, to midfield. That was by their choice. Uh, Danny Rocco, the head coach there, left it up to the seniors to kind of pick which games they wanted to be game captains for. How about that? Michael Strauss and Michael Rocco. Big surprise, surprise. surprise. Uh, <laughs> they, they both pick Virginia. So that'll be interesting. You know, Kevin Parks will be out there at midfield as a captain for Virginia. And uh, he talked about this week. You know, he's going to joke with them a little bit. I don't think there's any – there's certainly no bad blood between the players. I, no. I feel like uh, they understood the situation. Um, you know, there might be some – you know, Michael Rocco ha has said comments over the years about that he thought it was handled poorly – uh, at Virginia, how it was a kind of a weird quarterback situation. For the most part, everybody kind of agrees there. Uh, but Rocco did mention Wednesday, you know, he doesn't know how he'll be perceived at Scott Stadium. You know, Kevin Parks talked about, kind of jokingly said, I hope there's some booze. Uh, how, how do you think he'll, he'll be received? I think there will be some booze, just yeah. because a lot of people didn't understand his frustration of wanting to leave. They thought he should have been more patient. I, I, I don't know if his dad uh, kind of uh, accelerated the process mm -hmm. or not out of frustration. But I think for the most part, Virginia fans uh, appreciate what he did and thought he was a class act and wished him well. And I think they'd root for him if he weren't playing against sure. Virginia. Yeah. Again, Michael Rock is a guy that made 21 starts, uh, obviously the most consistent quarterback uh, that Mike London's had uh, since he's been here. So Saturday he comes back and kind of his college career comes certainly full circle as he, uh, you know, has a chance to lead a, a pretty game Richmond team uh, into Scott Stadium. Richmond on a six-game win streak. Virginia on a ten-game losing streak. So we'll see uh, kind of one of those streaks is going to stop on Saturday. Who's it going to be? We'll tell you after this. We'll give our predictions for Virginia and Richmond. All right, prediction time here on the Cavalier Insider pregame show. And I, I will say, I think I think last week uh, this footage was was seen by for some Virginia defenders were not real happy with the fact that I picked them to lose 42-17 to UCLA. <laughs> and they used that as motivation. They went out and they certainly shut me up. So you got to give props to Henry Coley, uh, Daquan Romero and company. Those guys were uh, surprised a lot of people, including me. Um, you know, previously, Virginia had, had lost those type of games, 59-10, to Clemson, Oregon. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I guess I didn't trust that uh, with everybody coming back, they would be able to put up a performance like that, and they certainly proved it. So this is all to you guys. I, I, I uh, tip my hat. So going forward, uh, now place a, a Richmond team that put up over 640 yards of total offense last week uh, in its first game. Granted, it was against Moorhead State. Uh, Michael Strauss and Michael Rocca, who we talked about in the earlier segment, uh, that two-quarterback system worked pretty well for them. Strauss was named CAA Offensive Player of the Week for his efforts. I think he was 19 of 23, so really, really uh, efficient. I believe Rocco was 9 of, of 13. So to get to kind of uh, my prediction first, I think you've got to give two predictions when it comes to this game. Number one, who's going to win? Number two, who becomes Virginia's next quarterback? And I think <laughs> uh, for me, I think Virginia does this win this one 27 to 10. 
Um, I think that defense is just too, too good. Um, I know Richmond has a pretty good offense, but you know what? UCLA had a pretty good offense, too, and they didn't do much uh, at Scott State. I think these guys will be pretty fired up to play. Uh, a couple of old old quarterbacks, and Michael Strauss, Michael Strauss and Michael Rocco, and I think the defense does shine there. Now, for the quarterback question, I know Matt Johns right now is, is the flavor of the week and stuff like that, but something tells me that Grayson Lambert, the nerves will, will be gone, things like that. He'll perform to the level that I think a lot of people expected him to, and I, I think that him being that captain, him being that leader, uh, he comes through. But who knows? Uh, this is Virginia football after all. They'll probably play about evenly, and we'll talk about another quarterback race next week. <laughs> yeah, good point. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think uh, R- Richmond's going to come in here very well prepared. Danny Rocco is a heck of a football coach, mm-hmm. and uh, I, I think they're going to come in. I think they'll give Virginia a good game, but I just – and I think Michael Strauss, as good as he is, I think it's not, he's not going to put up those kind of numbers against right. Virginia's defense. It's just not going to happen. Um, Richmond hasn't beaten Virginia since 1946. I don't think they're going to – they might have to wait until 2046, I think, because it's not going to happen this Saturday either. Virginia's going to win. I, I'm, I don't know about the score. I haven't thought much about it. I'm, I'm going to guess something like 30 to 14, something like that. But um, uh, I, the, the one thing I'm going to be interested to see is if Virginia's offense can res, res, uh, respond and, and put up some numbers. Generally, FCS schools – as good as our offenses are, sometimes their defenses aren't as good. So it's going to be interesting to see if Virginia can take advantage of that. I agree with you. I think even though Matt Johns, I think, should start the game, they're both going to play. And, you know, I, I think Grayson Lambert is a fighter, a leader. Mm-hmm. If he's as good as advertised, and uh, I think he'll win his job back. It doesn't take anything away from Matt Johns. I just think that, you know. Uh, if he's as good as he's supposed to be, I think he'll find a way to win his starting job back. Uh, so I, I think that's something that we're going to have to keep a close watch on as the season goes. Uh, if, if he doesn't, like you said, there's going to be a lot of drama uh, week in and week out until somebody finally wins that job. So should be uh, should be a fun day tomorrow to uh, – to check out how these things go. This has to be as intriguing of a uh, FBS versus FCS game as there is in the country, uh, considering <laughs> yeah. everything that's going on uh, on both sides. And, and I'll I tell you what, too. It, it, it's going to speak volumes about whether Mike Lennon keeps his job or not, sure. too, because if he loses to his alma mater, the team he used to coach, an FCS school at home with against these old quarterbacks, yep. <clears throat> it could be curtains because yep. when you're trying to get – five or six wins to keep your job. You better not lose this yep. one. Yep, yep. So there is there is a lot, a lot involved. This is not your run-of-the-mill uh, non-conference game uh, at Scott Stadium. So, uh, And like you said, if, if, if the quarterback race continues, which I think all of us have a hunch that it, something will happen and we'll be talking about the same thing next week, uh, they won't be playing Richmond next week. They'll be playing Louisville. So uh, arguably the second-best team in the ACC behind Florida State. So... A lot of things uh, could happen between now uh, and next week, just like a lot of things happen between UCLA and this week. Hey, it's Virginia football. You never know what's going to happen. So that will do it for uh, week two of our Cavalier Insider pregame show. We'll uh, talk to you next week.